Okay, I'm going to cover today a sub and amp install. What's different about this install is I'm going to be using the factory radio. The vehicle I have this install on is a 05 Silverado without the Bose system. The reason I'm keeping the factory radio is I like the OEM look and the steering wheel controls will stay functional. Um, there are aftermarket decks that you can buy adapters for that will make the steering wheel controls functional, but I'm going to keep it OEM up here. Moving on to the sub and amp. Uh, this is all a contained unit. The amp is built into the box. This is a ported box. It's 300 watt rated. RMS is probably, I think, around 150 watts. Can't remember what ohms that's on, but uh, it's a 10 inch sub. It's a dual sub. Uh, this. This box, along with all the other components I used, was purchased at Walmart. People will frown on that, but uh, this is going to be more or less just a budget install. I'm not looking for a lot of bass in my truck. I'm just looking for something a little bit more than what the factory speakers can do. And for the price of 150 bucks, roughly, for everything here, it's a pretty, pretty good deal. This uh, box, sub, and amp alone was $100 from Walmart. The adapter that you'll need, which I'll cover in a little bit, was $20, and the wiring kit was also $20. So after tax, about $150, bucks, which isn't too bad. Now this uh, sub, box, amp combo, it seems that the box is actually really well put together. This, this portion here is wood, and it seems like it's got, uh, this looks like plastic to me, I don't know, maybe wood. It's well put together actually. For the price, I couldn't complain. It's got some support brackets up here, speaker guards if you want to call them that too. Uh, pretty well put together. Unfortunately, i uh not able to tuck it underneath my seat and put my seat down. But I don't really use that anyways. I have it up most of the time so it'll work for me. Now the next part to cover here is this adapter. This adapter here is what will uh, in turn wire into these wires or they're soldered to these wires. These wires are ran to the rear door speakers. Um, well not to the speakers themselves but to the wiring harness that runs to the speakers. This will convert your high from your speaker wires. It'll convert it from high to low and this will allow you to plug your RCA, RCAs into the amp itself. If you look down here there's a power and ground that come off this adapter. This is a powered unit. And what I did is I just ran them to the power and ground on the amp. That'll power the unit itself and work just fine. It also has a remote wire that'll be wired directly to the remote tab on the amp as well. This adapter comes with another wire that plugs into the bottom of this. This wire goes up to the base controller knob that is mounted underneath my dash. It'll allow you to control the base through here and you can control the base on the sub and amp. Uh, gives you more control over your uh, frequency and your base level. Now with these speaker wires, these are extensions because these wires alone aren't obviously long enough to reach both sides of the uh, truck. And what I actually ended up doing was instead of uh, going to each side of the truck with these, I found that all the or both rear door speakers run underneath this driver side panel here. There's a, a wire harness under here that's taped together. I cut it apart and determined which wires were my door speakers. There were six wires under here, four of which were to the speakers, two of which actually were to the rear window defrost. So you won't touch those. Um, on your vehicle, you'll have to determine which uh, colored wires go to which door and which wires are positive and which are negative because you want to wire everything up correctly. You don't want negative going to positive or anything like that because that can cause feedback in your system. Now, what I did was I ran these extensions up underneath the back of my truck here under this carpet down here and right about here, I don't really want to pull this up, but uh, I found which wires were my speaker wires and I soldered the connections in line with the speaker wires so I re retained function in my door speakers. Door speakers will still work but it'll send a signal through this extension into the adapter thus making the sub work correctly. Um, 
Moving on to the power and ground. It's a pretty basic install. The ground is actually just mounted up here. You uh, always want to make sure when you mount a ground, you want to clean the surface. Paint doesn't really uh, conduct very well, so you want to make sure you've got a good mating surface between your ground and uh, whatever metal you're drilling into. And on that note, whenever you drill a screw or drill a hole in the sheet metal on your vehicle, make sure what you're drilling into isn't something important. I looked underneath the truck and it's just some sheet metal, so I was able to drill through it just fine. The power wire is also ran with everything else. Goes underneath all of these uh, panels up underneath the dash here. As you can see, I ran it up under the firewall. Zip ties are your friend when it comes to uh, tucking wires away. So I ran it up under here and I found a spot right there I drilled through. And uh, I didn't have a rubber grommet to put in the hole, but what I did do was uh, use some silicone. I put that around the wire and the hole, let it dry. That will prevent the wire from rubbing on the metal and eventually wearing through the insulation and causing uh, a grounding issue. Uh, you don't want things to short out. I uh, highly advise that you find a spot through your firewall to run your power cable. Unless you have a vehicle that has a battery that's located in, under the seat or, you know, some vehicles have batteries that aren't under the hood or under the seat or, you know, inside the uh, cab somewhere. But do not, whatever you do, run your ground or your power cable through your door here and fender. I've seen it done before. Quite honestly, I've done it once or twice. When I first started doing installs, just due to the fact that I was too lazy to try to find a spot in a firewall. Doing it this way is going to cause issues. Um, I mean, serious issues. <laughs> you pinch that uh, power cable between, you know, your your door and your body here enough times, it'll break that insulation. And well, if you've ever seen uh, what it looks like when you connect the connect a wire between the positive and uh, negative terminal, you get sparks. So what I did was ran it through. As you can see, that's where that hole is, and there's some silicone there. Ran that positive wire up through here fuse is right there for it and I just ran it actually to this little uh, battery box thing here and screwed it onto one of the terminals in there I didn't want to actually run it up here so once you do that that's pretty much the whole wiring install on the vehicle that's all you'll end up touching um, now, like I said this will probably actually work on you know quite a few vehicles I believe even vehicles with uh, amplifiers built in this is, uh, setup will work on it as long as you have this device without this it will not work and whatever you do do not try to skip this part and just plug your RCs, uh, RCAs into your amp and try to wire these to your speakers because your speakers are putting out a high frequency or a, I guess I shouldn't say that because I'm not too informed on it but I just know it's a high to low converter. You don't want to run your high directly to your amp because uh, you'll get a lot of feedback and it won't sound good. I've seen some videos of people who've done installs without these converters and it's it's not pleasant. This isn't going to be a high end quality sound amp when it's all said and done, but it's uh, you know not going to be horrible either as long as you do it right. And if you go over here, the packaging for this. This is what it's actually labeled, amplifier add-on adapter for adding subwoofer systems to any car stereo, any. Even if you have an aftermarket deck, you could still do this, but I wouldn't advise it because aftermarket decks already have RCA outputs. Um, it comes with this wiring diagram. As you can see, here's the adapter. There's the six wires that come off of it, two of which are ground, and then four of which go to your speakers. Two to the right side, two to the left side. And determining which ones are your door speakers, that's going to be based on your vehicle. This is the actual install wiring kit for the amp. Um, 680 watt rated. Again, it's Walmart. $20 for this, $20 for that. It's uh, you know cheap, but it does the job and works well. That's garbage. Anyways, that's pretty much what covers the install. Uh, any questions, you can message me or... Make a comment on the video.